Assalamu alaikum everyone I hope you are doing okay this is your host Harun Bukhari and you are watching let's talk uh well if you have clicked this video that means you have seen the thumbnail and you know what we are going to discuss in this video so thank you very much for support all for your time and today's video will be in english and urdu both so first phase will be probably in english and in the end i am going to explain you the same scenario what we have discussed in english in urdu so why i want to make this in in english because i want to you know expand my viewership i want more people to watch because you know of course uh, i am living in ua and and the thing is a lot of people they don't speak urdu so the the language barrier is there and still i haven't figured out that how i am going to put subtitles but soon inshallah i will figure out but anyways so before we uh, before i uh, right, jump into this video and we start discussing about what we want to discuss in this video uh, i i don't want to make it long because i want to show you something in this video first so i would like to i would like your attention and i would like you to uh, listen whatever i'm going to uh, present you next these are two scholars one is sexologist sexologist i'm sorry if my tongue is not uh, sexologist and the other one is probably was her student but now also a part of their institute and probably on a bit on a big uh, position so because of uh, copyright issues i cannot show you their faces i will try to put only with voices and uh, in the in my video description uh, i will give you a link if you want to watch the original video as well well there is no collaboration i haven't asked them for the permission uh, and uh, to be very honest i don't have that much time if facebook will not uh, sorry youtube will not give me a uh, copyright issue then probably you will go and end up watching this video so uh, before any uh, without any further delay um watch this jaisa ki aapko pata hai ki video kis uh, video ka topic kya hai bahut important topic hai maine isme ek urdu ka chhota part add kiya hai is wajah se kyunki ये वीडियो आ, मैं इंग्लिश में बना रहा था इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज में लेकिन आपको एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए जो लोग नहीं प्रॉपरली समझ पा रहे उनके लिए कि ये वीडियो किससे रिलेटेड है प्रॉबली अगर आपने ये लिंक वीडियो को क्लिक किया है तो ऑफ कोर्स आपको पता है कि मैं किस बारे में बात कर रहा हूँ और ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक है और आप इस टॉपिक को सुनिए अगर स्पेशली आप यंगस्टर्स हैं इस टॉपिक को ज़रूर सुनिए और अलहमदिल्ला बोलिए कि आप मुसलमान हैं और क्योंकि मैं आपको इस वीडियो में जिन दो लोगों की कन्वर्सेशन सुनाऊंगा वो ऑफ़ कोर्स मुस्लिम नहीं है लेकिन आ, वो इसी टॉपिक पे बात कर रहे हैं कि क्यों सेक्स आ, शादी से पहले या एक स्पेसिफिक एज से पहले जो ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट बात है वो ये है कि शादी से पहले नहीं होना चाहिए जो कि आपको पता है वेस्टर्न कंचर कल्चर में यूरोप में नॉर्मल है कभी आप कभी लड़का किसी के साथ मैं स्पेसिफिक लड़की की बात नहीं कर रहा दोनों जेंडर की बात कर रहा हूँ लड़की एक लड़के के साथ है साल बाद महीने बाद दो महीने छः महीने बाद किसी और के साथ है इसी तरह लड़के का भी है मतलब डिफरेंट रिलेशन होते हैं तो ये क्यों आपको आपके लिए आपकी लाइफ के लिए आगे मैरिटल मैरिज लाइफ के लिए ये चीज़ अच्छी नहीं है वो इस बात पर डिस्कस कर रहे हैं तो ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियो है मैं इसको एंड में एक और चीज़ अगर जो भी चीज़ मैंने इंग्लिश में बोली है मैं कोशिश करूँगा और पूरी ट्राई करूँगा कि मैं आ, मैं उसको उर्दू में भी एंड में एक्सप्लेन करूँ ताकि आपके लिए आ, आसानी हो सुनने में समझने में तो अलहमदिल्ला कि हम मुसलमान हैं और अब देखें अब जब पहले हम लोग इनको ये समझाते थे इनको ये समझ नहीं आती थी ये लोग बोलते थे कि ये लोग बुरे हैं ये लोग बच्चों पे जुल्म करते हैं उनको अपनी लाइफ नहीं जीने देते वगैरह वगैरह और पता नहीं और क्या क्या इस्लाम वो फोबिया के नाम पे ये लोग बोलते थे लेकिन अब क्योंकि इन्होंने खुद स्टडी किया और उनको खुद पता चला है कि इस तरह की चीज़ें अच्छी नहीं हैं तो अब ये बोल रहे हैं उस चीज़ के ऊपर लेकिन अगेन इस्लाम की बात उसमें नहीं की उन्होंने जबकि अगर वो कर लेते तो एक अच्छी चीज़ होती कि मतलब अगर उसको एग्जाम्पल दे लेते जिस टॉपिक से रिलेटेड वो बात कर रहे थे कि क्योंकि हमारे हमारे इस्लाम में तो अलाउड नहीं है विदाउट शादी हैविंग अफेयर या जो भी चीज़ होती है तो आ, मैं आपको एक वीडियो सुनाऊंगा प्लीज़ उस वीडियो को ज़रूर देखिए सुनिए पूरी सुनिए कॉपीराइट की वजह से मैं उसको पूरा आपको नहीं दिखा पाऊंगा सॉरी पिक्चर नहीं दिखा पाऊंगा सिर्फ ऑडियो दिखा पाऊँगा सुना पाऊँगा सो प्लीज़ वीडियो को एंड तक देखिएगा पूरा देखिएगा थैंक यू वेरी मच
Let's face it, we are sexual beings. I mean, we're made to be sexual beings. There are some people who are asexual, but they're really very rare when it comes to human beings. Well, since we are sexual beings, we talk about having sex in marriage, but we also have to face the fact that we know that most people in America are actually sexually active before they get married. Is that a good thing, a bad thing, or does it make no difference at all? Let's talk about that. I'm Dr. Joe Beam with Marriage Helper, along with Kimberly Holmes, our CEO and leader. Kimberly, how widespread do you think it is that people are having sex well before they get married? I would say very, very widespread. Mm -hmm. There's actually, and we, uh, if I had it in front of me, I don't right now, they have a study that was done just a few years ago where by age group, they can tell you what percentage of girls have done what sex acts and what percentage of boys have done what sex acts. And it starts about age 14. And then it goes on from there up to people who are actually in their 80s, what percentage of people are still sexually active. And when you look at statistics like that, and it was a very well done study, you see that most people, whether they're married or not, are having sex. And some people who are married are having sex they shouldn't be having because it's with somebody else. Mm. But let's talk about people out there who are not married right now, who are thinking, Maybe, you know, if I'm going to marry somebody, wouldn't I need to see if we're sexually compatible? What about that logic? Yeah, it's first of all, it's prevalent. I'm right. I mean, I was hearing just the other day a couple of girls talking about talking about it and talking about how on the third date is kind of when you start having sex. And all I think is uh, for a lot of personal reasons, because I know how destructive that can be for a future marriage right whether you marry that person or not maybe even worse if you don't marry that person the more sexual partners you have you're the sexologist but it has to impact the sexual satisfaction you have in your marriage without a doubt and that third date thing is actually pretty common several years ago i'm talking about a long time ago now there was a group of single women here in nashville where we are nashville tennessee and these were all uh, dedicated church going christian young women who were saying that you slept with a guy on the third date not Mm -hmm. long after that our friend dudley out in oklahoma uh, dudley chancy dr chancy actually did a little survey with some single christian women and they said It's the third date when you finally sleep with another guy. And these were people who had been raised in churches that said that you should be celibate until you marry. And so, yes, it's highly prevalent. Now, have we talked about before some of the downsides of what that means? I don't believe that we have. I don't think we've had this conversation before, at least recorded for other people to hear. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, Because of the fact that I have studied sex for many, many years, I am a sexologist. And uh, when Kimberly was still in college, she took one of my human sexuality classes at the university. And one day when we were talking about certain parts of the female anatomy, one uh, one of the other young women in the class looked at her and said, is this like freaking you out? To which Kimberly replied, at our home, this is dinner conversation. <laughs> so will it affect you? Now, think about it this way. If we start looking at the average number of sex partners, you can find where that is for men in America and around the world. You can find what that is for women. But we're not looking at statistics here. We're looking at, okay, what is the effect? So, Kimberly, once I was on Woody and Jim, one of the most popular radio programs here in Nashville, Tennessee, rock and roll station. And, you know, for a couple of years, I'd go over there once a month and I would take calls on that rock and roll station about relationships. Mm -hmm. And so this one time a lady called in and she said, I'm getting married Saturday. Congratulations. She said, I'm a virgin. Mm, Congratulations. And this was like a Wednesday. She said, so I think what I need to do is to go to a club tonight, pick up a guy, and have sex. Because when I get married on Saturday, if I'm still a virgin, that will be the only sex partner I've ever had, and I think I need not to cheat myself like that. Mm -hmm. What would you have said to her? I would have said, beautiful woman, please do not do this to yourself. I mean, at the end of it, it's why would you, well, granted, I've heard you tell this story before, but why would you take that beautiful 
experience that will just be between you and your husband at this point and bring in another person to make it hazy. You're going to be comparing your spouse at that point to this person, thinking about, well, now that I've had two experiences, what would it be like if it was someone else? You just add too much into your mind to wander with when Mm -hmm. you bring more than one sexual partner Mm -hmm. in your life. And that's basically what I said to her. If you wait till Saturday, he's going to be the best lover you've ever had. Mm -hmm. But just suppose that you pick up some guy tonight and he's particularly skilled at it. Then you'll start comparing your husband and it's going to turn out bad. So on another occasion, talk to a young lady who was 26 years old. Um, She had married at 21 and she and her husband had come to one of our workshops because of the fact that their marriage was in big trouble. And during one of the breaks, just the two of us were talking and I asked her, I said, so what's what's the main problem in your marriage here? And she said, I'm just sexually bored and I need to have more sexual excitement. Now, I'm looking at her husband across the room and he's a good looking guy and he's in good physical shape and those kinds of things. And so I said, why is it not giving you what you want? And then I thought and asked another question. I said, so tell me when you first became sexually active. She said at uh, 16. And I said, and when did you marry him? She said, 21. Now, in those five years between the time you became sexually active and the time you married this guy, how many different men were you with? And she said, 60. S-I-X-T-Y. Oh, my goodness. 60. And I said, is it any wonder that this guy you find dull and boring because you've been making love to him for five years when in the previous five years you had different sizes of men some tall some short etc you've had different skill levels of men etc etc you have conditioned yourself that it should be different over and over and over again always a new experience you have actually imprinted that into your brain and until and unless you can find some way to get past that there is no one man who will ever sexually satisfy you because the more partners you have whether you're male or female the more partners that you have before you get married the more that's going to affect your sexual satisfaction level in the marriage because you're going to be comparing whether you think you will or not right i'm sitting here thinking about how first of all i am I am blessed that I grew up in a home that taught me morals about sex to that's something that happens between a husband and a wife to wait till you're married, all of those things. And so we did, right? Like Rob and I are just Rob and I, that's uh, for both of us. That's the only person we've ever had. And I'm so thankful because it's such an intimate and vulnerable thing that if I thought that I was being compared with him with someone else, like that would be difficult. And then same on the other way around. But I'm also well aware that this is not what all parents teach their kids. No. And also it's a cultural belief that sex makes you happy. So you should just have sex with whoever, when you want to, all of those things. And so what you and I are saying, well, I don't know if we've explicitly said it yet, but we believe sex should be something that happens within a marriage, right? Between those two people. Um, But that goes against everything that culture is saying. But we've talked about love on previous programs. And according to Sternberg's research, love has three basic components. One is intimacy, into me see, where you can be open and transparent and vulnerable. You build that trust. Another is passion, which has a sexual component, but it's basically about a craving for oneness. And then there's commitment, which is almost a daily decision that I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep this relationship alive. Now, that's what love is. Now, I don't know if we've ever talked about this before, but I personally see human beings as being triune. Triune? (laughs) That there's basically three parts of us. And you say, what what do you mean? Well, there's the physical part of us, you understand, and then there's the logical part of us, and then there's the emotional part of us. You say logic and emotions are not the same thing? (laughs) No, no, they really are. One can be analytical, the other goes primarily off what you're feeling at the moment. And if you want to look in a spiritual kind of way, we're triune being in the sense that not only do we have a body, but we also have a spirit and a soul. And you look at those things and say, so what's your point? If you really have sex in the way it was designed to be fulfilled, 
It's not just to make a baby, although that's the way we're designed. We are designed that sex makes babies. I mean, that's that's the way we're put together. But in the way that it was designed to be, and, and I'll just refer to my religion for a minute, where he talked about that Adam knew his wife, Eve. That's back in our book of Genesis. And other parts of my Bible, it will talk about knowing your wife, becoming one with your wife or your husband. I even wrote a book called Becoming One about that. It's not just having two bodies joined together, but two hearts, two minds, two, two souls joining together. And you can't do that with a lot of different people. So your sister, Joanna, went with me once when I spoke at a youth thing, oh, this was a hundred years ago, over in Washington State. And so we went to this thing and I was speaking to all these teenagers and Joanna had flown out there with me. And the youth ministers, um, and youth ministers can be actually tough. They had gotten this uh, this gray duct tape. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? This duct tape. And they got three boys up on the stage that had hairy arms. And they put that duct tape around the first boy's arm. And they said, that's what it's like when you become one. So what is it like when you lose that? And they ripped that off that boy. He screamed. And, and they hold up this thing and little hairs are hanging out of it. So they had to catch the second boy. <laughs> and then they finally put it around him. And he didn't hurt much at all. And they couldn't make it stick on the third boy oh because they used the same piece same of duct tape piece. and they said you can't be one with everybody mm. and i thought you know kind of tough on the boys for the illustration but it makes sense if sex is just sex you're missing out on a lot i mean a whole lot if it's really two people joining themselves together as one where it's an emotional experience a spiritual experience a mental experience then it's as it was designed to be. So what do you say to people who say, but it's my right? It is their right. They can do what they wish to do. But it's also their right to uh, drink a gallon of arsenic if that's what they want to do. <laughs> I mean, you look at people and go, it's my right. Yeah, you have a right to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but is that going to be wise? Right. Is that going to be smart? Basically, what it boils down to is, what do you want? Mm. What do you really want? Well, if you want to live, you won't drink the, ar uh, the ar arsenic. If you, if you want a deeply meaningful relationship that's beyond what just sex can do, then we'd say, don't have sex until you're married. If you've already been having sex, stop. Do it with a person that you can commit to completely because that's then where you will have what you're looking for. Now, if you're just looking for a physical sexual thrill, it's easy to find, but you're really, really missing out. What do you say to the people who are engaged? So they know they're going to be married. They know this is the person I'm going to be with. What's the harm in having sex before marriage? I think part of it, and this is going to be a silly illustration, it's kind of like Christmas. It's like, I know what's coming. I'm looking forward to it. And it actually builds my excitement that I'm waiting for the day when that can happen. Mm-hmm. This is, this is a question a little bit out of left field, but do you think that in the Christian community, the age tends to skew a little younger for getting married? Do you think that is because more of them are more likely to wait until marriage, therefore they get married younger in order to be able to have sex? That's possible. That is possible. I don't. I don't know any statistics on that. Um, they probably exist. I just don't know what they are. I do know that the more conservative your religion, mm -hmm. the less likely you are to have sex before marriage. But if a, if somebody was getting married just so they could finally have sex, I'd be saying that's probably not going to give you what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You want a person that you can unite with, body, mind, heart, and soul. Mm -hmm. And so don't get married just to have sex. Then make sure that that you can put all that together. Now, if you can't control your sex drive, then maybe go ahead and get married. That's what 1 Corinthians 7 says. But otherwise, what you're looking for is the person you can be one with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to parents that are listening to this podcast? So many of our listeners may already be married. This doesn't necessarily apply to them, but it probably applies to their kids. How would you encourage them to talk about these concepts with their yeah. kids? Well, locking them in their bedroom till they're 21 is not the best idea. <laughs> okay. It actually has to do with conversation. 
things are more, well, let me use the word tempting. Things are more tempting when you don't know much about it. Like, I just got some of an idea of what that would be like. Because when a kid starts going through puberty, male or female, they start feeling some of these sexual drives and urges. And boys start noticing girls and girls start noticing boys. And, and they start feeling emotions when they feel all those things. And, and they're being prepared to be sexual people. The best thing to do is to talk openly about that. I mean, make it where it's not going to be evil and dirty. But you use the right anatomical terms and, and you make it where that your children can feel comfortable asking you anything. And the way that you build that is that early on, you are very frank and open with them, not crude, not rude. You're not using street language. That's bad. But, but helping them know, hey, we can talk about these things. That's what we did with you mm -hmm. and and you and Rob. I remember when you went to get your exam before you got married, you got mad at the doctor. Remember that? <laughs> yes, but why do you, what do you remember you about it? You told me because of the fact that he asked you guys how, how long you'd been having That's sex already. Right. I was thinking of a different exam. Yes, that that is exactly what he said. And I said, we have not. It infuriated you that it he- It did infuriate me. But that's what he expected to say. That is what he expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So key takeaways from this episode would be that we encourage sex to occur within marriage because that is where it's supposed to be. That's where the trust, the vulnerability, the intimacy, the commitment is there in order it for it to be a part of the bigger part of marriage, which is building love, building passion, intimacy, commitment, all of those things. And so if you have been being sexually active outside of marriage, then change your behavior. Stop. Save that for when you get married. Or if you have someone that you love, a family member, a kid that's going through this, talk openly about the benefits of sex inside of marriage and why it's important to wait. And it's not just because it's about waiting. It's about because of because of what sex between just a husband and a wife is so good for why mm -hmm. it is so good mm -hmm. do you have anything to add sometimes people have said this but but uh if if you don't have sex to get married how do you know you're going to be compatible mm. it's the same thing we talked about earlier as with parents you talk about it openly before you get married so you can know where each person's coming from what they think what they believe what they feel Absolutely. Well, thank you, thank sexologist, you. Dr. Joe Beam. So welcome back, guys. If you have listened to that podcast or that conversation fully, probably by this time you would have understood what they are trying to tell you. And um, that is why that is why I was telling you before that, that Alhamdulillah, you should say Alhamdulillah, you're Muslim, because in our religion, as you know, it is prohibited to have sex or a this kind of relation before you get married and why is that they have explained it in a tremendous manner i am not going to explain it anymore please do li listen to this uh, con communication please watch full video so that you can you will be able to understand and please say alhamdulillah अब मैं आपको उर्दू में थोड़ा एक्सप्लेन कर देता हूँ जैसे कि आपने कन्वर्सेशन सुनी है अगर आपको नहीं समझ आई तो मैं जल्दी से आपको बता देता हूँ इसमें इन्होंने यही बताया है कि क्यों आपको अपनी सेक्सुअल रिलेशनशिप शादी से पहले या अपने पार्टनर जिससे आपकी शादी होती है उसके अलावा आपको किसी के साथ नहीं करने चाहिए इसमें इन्होंने ये भी बताया है एक बच्चे की एग्ज़ाम्पल दी है जिसने बोला है एक लड़की की एग्ज़ाम्पल दी जिसने बोला है कि जी मेरे 21 साल की उम्र में शादी हुई और मेरी कंपेटिबिलिटी नहीं बन रही मेरे हस्बैंड के साथ जबकि उन्होंने ये बताया है कि उसमें डॉक्टर है उन्होंने बताया कि कपल बहुत खूबसूरत था बहुत ग्रेसफुल था दोनों एक दूसरे को के साथ चल रहे अच्छा लग रहा था कपल लेकिन जब उससे क्वेश्चन किया गया लड़की से उसने बोला कि जी पहली दफ़ा मैंने सेक्स चौदह साल की उम्र में किया था प्रॉबली चौदह या सोलह साल की उम्र में किया था और इक्कीस साल की उम्र में मेरी शादी हुई थी और उससे जब पूछा गया कितने लड़कों के साथ मर्दों के साथ तुम रही हो तो उसने बोला सिक्सटी साठ तो इसके बाद उन्होंने समझाया गया ये बताया गया कि ऑफ कोर्स जब तुम इतने मर्दों के साथ रहोगी या कोई भी लड़का इतनी औरतों के साथ रहेगा तो जब वो एक औरत के साथ रहेगा या मर्द के साथ रहेगा एक कंपेटिबिलिटी बनाने की कोशिश करेगा लेकिन आपके माइंड में वो कंपैरिजन रहेगा जो आपने 
पास में पास में एक्सपीरियंस किया हुआ है जैसे वो लड़की ने बोला है कि अगर आप इतने लोगों के साथ लड़कियों के साथ रह लेते हो तो आप ऑलरेडी सेक्सोलॉजिस्ट हो जाते हो तो आप एक एक एक्सपर्ट हो जाते हो उस चीज़ के बारे में कि आपको क्या चाहिए क्या चीज़ चाहिए आपको डिफरेंट फ्लेवर्स चाहिए तो ये डिफरेंट फ्लेवर्स वाली कहानी ही उन्होंने एक्सप्लेन करने की कोशिश की है मैं छोटा करके आपको इसलिए बता रहा हूँ कि ऑलरेडी अठारह मिनट की कम्युनिकेशन है उनकी और उसके बाद मेरी भी वीडियो है तो बहुत लंबी वीडियो हो जाएगी तो इसके ऊपर मैं एक और इसको हटा के सेपरेटली मैं कोशिश करूंगा इस पर वीडियो बना लूं तो मकसद कहने का आपको बताने का ये है कि हर चीज़ का टाइम होता है हर चीज़ अच्छी होती है और उन्होंने ये भी बताया इसमें कि बच्चों के साथ ओपनली कम्युनिकेट करें इस तरह से कम्युनिकेट करें कि वो आपके साथ फ्रेंडली रहें आपको हर चीज़ आके बताएँ क्योंकि अगर आप नहीं बताएंगे तो फिर कोई और बताएगा और जब कोई और बताएगा तो बहुत गलत तरीके में बताएगा और उसका परसेप्शन और उसका जो इनटेक होगा बच्चे के अंदर या बच्चा उसको किस तरह से लेता है वो डिफरेंट होगा तो अपने बच्चे के साथ में बच्चों के साथ ओपनली रहें फ्रेंडली मैनर में रहें उसको स्टब नहीं करें अगर कुछ वो बात करना चाह रहा है चाह रही है उसके साथ ओपनली बात करें तो ये थी आज की हमारी वीडियो उम्मीद है आपको पसंद आई होगी प्लीज़ पूरी वीडियो देखिएगा अगेन बता रहा हूँ अगर आपको समझ आए समझ तभी आएगी अगर आप पूरी देखेंगे सो अनटिल नेक्स्ट टाइम अनटिल नेक्स्ट वीडियो असलकम